How do I create a tree in Kotlin? Well, you create a class, you call it tree node. Why is it not called tree? Well, because it's just one node which has a value and children. Those children are other tree nodes who have values and children and so on and so forth. So in fact, it's just a node. The concept of the tree is a bunch of nodes. It's gonna support adding an element to the tree and the storage means here is a mutable list of tree nodes. So you just call the add function on that mutable list and then you've added a child to that tree. And that's all, that's it. You now have a tree. The issue with the tree is the traversal or how you go over the children and print them or use them or search for a value inside. That's what makes up a tree in code meaning that's where you get the full functionality, the way you traverse it, how you use it. But as far as the data structure, this is it. A node which has a value and children. Let's first print all of the elements inside this tree. So you're gonna define a function called for each depth first. It's going to take a visitor type. Now this type is a type alias, which we're gonna create. Meaning whenever we type visitor of T, it's going to be basically a function that takes a tree node and returns nothing. When we first enter the function, we're going to call this visit function on the tree. What we're going to do basically is visit it first, and then for each of its children, we call recursively the same function given the same visitor. It's going to again print the next node and the next node and the next node, etc. Depth first. This is the type alias we've defined. It's called visitor accepts generic type. It is a function which takes a tree node accepting generic type and returns nothing. Now we'll try to do the same thing, but in a breadth first, meaning by level. Finish the first level, horizontally get down to the next level, etc. instead of just diving deep depth first. <laughs> Again, it's gonna take a visitor, Again, we're going to visit the node that we started on. Then we're going to have a queue. Now this is where the queue, which we implemented in the last episode comes to play. For each of the children, instead of just visiting, we first add the child to the queue. Now we have all the children added. Take the first one out of the queue. With DQ, we check if it's null, then we visit that. And then for each of its children, again, you enqueue them into the queue. You take out the first one with DQ, and that's it. Next, we're gonna create the runner class so we can start testing out this tree. We're gonna have a function called make beverage tree. It's gonna construct a tree of beverages. It returns that tree to us. So it's a tree node of type string. It's gonna have nodes whose values are strings. So this is the tree node in the beginning called beverages. This is the root node. We're gonna define a couple of nodes here, and then we're gonna define the relations between them. So I just pasted this entire thing to save time. So you can see here, there's a bunch of tree nodes defined already. Hot and cold are the root nodes for tea, coffee, and chocolate. Those go to hot. Soda and milk go to cold. Black, green, and chai, they go to the T node, etc. That's your whole tree. Now here we construct the tree by calling the function. And let's try first going over the nodes in a depth first way. Now this is the visitor. It's a function which takes a tree node and then returns nothing. So you're already receiving this when you call the function inside for each depth first. So that's the tree node you're getting. Now you can just do anything with the this, the tree node. You print its value. And there you see all the values have been printed. They're not in a specific order, they're just one after the other. You're not gonna notice here the difference between for each depth and for each level. It's just the way that it's going over them. 
algorithmically inside, it's a different approach to iterating over all the values, but it's not going to differ in the final output because it's all just printing. Let's define a search function, to search for a value, and you return the node which has that value. So result is of type tree node, that's where we're going to store our result. And we're going to search using for each depth first. So this is depth first search. If the value that we have here, the visitor is not printing. It's a function that takes a tree node of type generic, but it's not using it to print. It's using it to check for the value. So if you check for the value and it's the value I'm looking for, assign that to it and print that I've found that value and then return the result. So let's search for chai. It does find chai. Let's search for something doesn't exist. No, nothing. Let's try to print each level, meaning contextually print at each level, which nodes are there. So again, we're going to have a queue, array list queue, same thing, except now we have to calculate how many nodes are at each level. I'm going to start off with a zero. So while the queue is not empty, I don't like using exclamation in the beginning. We're going to assign the count of how many items are in the queue to the nodes left in the current level. While that number is still not zero, while there's still nodes, take one node out of the queue. And if it's not null, print its value. And for each of its children, enqueue them, same thing. And now decrement the number of nodes left in that level, and then a separator print line to separate the levels. Let's try it out. Now here we forgot to initialize the algorithm with adding the very first item to the queue because right now it's empty and the while is checking for not empty. So you add the very first item to the queue to get this started. Now, if we print again, you'll see the nodes are distributed, beverages first, hot and cold, etc., etc. So that's a tree, that's it.